And we are back. We working, man. We're looking at offensive linemen. Today, we're looking at offensive line Evan Neal, uh, left tackle from Alabama. We have the Miami game and the Mississippi State game, of course. Uh, we watch those games over on the Patreon.com. I will be re-watching some more Evan Neal film just because I got some more theories to do. Because that's what we do in draft season, right? I'm not just going to watch it one time and say that's it. Like, if I got more to think about, I'll download some more games and I'll take a look at them. We're going to look at some more games on Evan Neal. So, to look at those games, uh, Patreon.com slash Vibe. Lombardi meet us over there meet the family over there and um you know we'll we'll be watching film or whatnot right but Evan Neal what I really like about Evan Neal and um the rest of this tackle class you look at the first few guys first three I'll say um Evan Ikeem and Charles Cross from Mississippi State right you look at them they're all different like you gain something picking a guy but you lose something not picking the other guy right uh let me just put this on the screen here let's just get into this man let, let, let's just get into this man show y'all ain't playing. show y'all ain't playing we got evan neal he's gonna be your left tackle for the duration of the film session number 73 um let's just take a look at him bro you know, it, I put out the Ikeem Ikwanu film session or whatever. You know, we talked about some of the things that he did. The, the and This is just natural in drafting, right? Like, yes, I would love to talk about Evan Neal as the player on his own, but, like, we're comparing these guys to each other, right? And the first thing that you see is we see a lot more control, a lot more technique. You're not losing nothing in size, though, because I would love for a combine nerd to tell us Evan Neal's measurables, but he's six seven, three hundred and mad pounds, you know? I'm saying he's a he's a huge human also right but he may not be as and this is so strange he may not be as explosive or like as naturally as whoopee as um ikeem he does have ass whoop to him though he's not as naturally as whoopee but he is a better technician than him right so you lose in one thing but like look at how measured this slide set is right look at just let's just look at him man let's let's just look at this man get out get out your ids man i need to make sure that everybody's 18 bro look at the bend in his knees okay look at him staying parallel look at how his hips are working right look at look at how his how his chest is up and he's not bending at the waist look at his hands in the holster ready to shoot they shoot right place fantastically inside got my grip got my cloth then once you get here i'm going to continue to drop my butt to anchor you so you stop moving he's one of those grip strength dudes evan neal he's a grip strength dude he get hands on you typically stop moving typically stop moving um, th this is just a lovely block to look at from a six, seven, three hundred and mad pounds individual, right? <laughs> Let's just take a look at it. Hold on, hold on. I got another one. Here we go again. Got another play. Evan Neal, left tackle. Hey, just look at the movement. Let's just look at the technique. Let's just look at how he executes his job here. And it's crazy, man, because you know Ikeem is more of the wild horse that you got to tame. You know what I mean? I think Evan Neal is closer to his ceiling, which is something that you got to consider when drafting. We'll talk about that more towards the end of the video. Um, ceiling versus floor, right? I think Evan Neal is is closer to you know the the guy that he's going to be right now right you can you can clean up some things in this game but you know those those bama dudes they're just so well coached man um and and this is another example he's not he's, he's not perfect right here because you know he kind of missed with the hand a little bit whatever whatever you know a little bit of a lean but still fantastic form better than you know you know my man's over there right um but let's talk about some more stuff we got a lot more than just pass sets i just thought it was you know he passed sets and he moves really well for a guy that his size uh that's six seven three hundred mad pounds but let's um let's take a look at this this is this is about to be fun let's talk about him exploding people which is my favorite topic of this year so far so let's talk about this right and i i'm, I'm showing y'all this play because i've mentioned ikeem as explode people do but i don't want y'all to take that and then twist it and be like oh well are you saying that evan neal is not an explode you guy evan neal is 100 percent an, an explode you guy his explode you rate is a little less <laughs> than ike king's but you take a look at him right here for the down block his his uh left guard center are gonna pull behind him um so he's explode you guy also right i just think the rate of it is 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 uh is so different but that's not because evan is soft or anything right he's probably ex exploding less people because he's less of a wild horse Course. he's a lot more composed he's a lot more patient because of his coaching right um but in certain plays where he has to rest people in the phone booth he can do this just as just as well as anybody 
Now, when I'm calling him the more technical guy, I'm I'm meaning between him and Ikeem, right? There's another dude in his class, Charles Cross, who really gets busy with the technique side of the game. Um, but Evan Neal is more technical than Ikeem, but Ikeem still kind of struggles with the consistency of his, you know, technical side, right? He's not always perfect. I think you you can you can definitely fix it, um, but I think sometimes with his base, it, it gets a little, you know, gets a little narrow, and he tends to turn sometimes and that'll get him out of position um this was a good jump of the snap by this offensive lineman right here but you see that if he's out of position if he wasn't in perfect position he can sometimes you know guys can kind of get the better of him that, that's anybody but it's really apparent um with evan some of these offensive linemen they can get in bad position but they recover well Evan, Evan Neal, you know, isn't the best recovery guy. He's one of them dudes to where if he gets you in the initial part of the block, you got him. But if he misses that, uh, then you can take advantage of that and you can, in turn, smoke him. Uh, so that's definitely something that he has to work on. Even on this play, you're going to see him working to the second level. Uh, his feet are going to, they're actually going to touch, but his feet get narrow. His base gets a little weird and, and, and people end up getting turned. And, you know, it, him, him not starting off in good position makes him not end up in good position. So um, it, it just it's just going to probably take, take some more reps of him. Uh, being a recovery guy so we can get a good idea of what he's going to be like as an NFL recovery guy. But uh, as of now, there are ways to to beat him or whatever. But boy, what a player. I'm, 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 I'm excited about uh, this dude and just seeing what he can do. I said earlier on my Twitter, uh, at Vach Lombardi or whatever, like if you're the New York Giants and you have those picks like that, that fifth and that seventh pick or something like that, it's your job to do whatever you got to do to spread lies, to spread some, you know, some bad luck propaganda, whatever it is you got to do. It, 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 it's not going to happen this way, but how dope would it be if you got Ikeem Ike, Ikwonu and Evan Neal on your offensive line at the same time? Like, how much more physical as a whole does your offensive line get in, in just one go if you just simply dra draft those dudes at five and seven? If they're there, I don't think they're going to be, I don't think both of them are going to be there for five and seven, but, you know, draft is weird, you know? Um, Two years ago, if you said that, okay, well, Tristan Wirfs and Jedrick Wills are the best offensive linemen in this draft, the Giants would throw you a bone and take Andrew Thomas first. You know what I mean? So you never know who's going to fall um, or where they're going to go. So, yeah, this dude, can he step right in and be a left tackle for you, like a franchise-type left tackle for you? 100%. Is he going to take a little bit of coaching? Sure. Is he ready to contribute today? 100%. Where does he go? Mm -hmm. Top ten somewhere, you know. That's that. I mean, that's 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 what they're saying. But teams suck at drafting, so I don't know what's going on. I don't know where he's gonna go. But um, just on that ceiling and um, floor conversation that, that we was having earlier, we use the end of the videos to have conversations with each other. We're family. Um, yeah. So, like I was saying, it's a lot less that you have to teach Evan Neal. You know, and when we're drafting, and you're thinking about which dude you might want to take first, do you want the dude that's complete now? which is Evan Neal, or do you, because he, I mean, yeah, he has things to work on, but he's more complete than Ikeem. Or do you want to go with the dude that has the higher ceiling? Because Ikeem ain't really got an idea what to do in football land at all, but physically he, he gets the job done. If you can upload all those upgrades to his system and then take that athletic ability and mesh it together into one dude, that dude's going to be way better than Evan Neal. Way better than Evan Neal. It just depends on if he gets there. You know, you may want the more technical guy, the, the, the guy Charles Cross or whatever we're gonna break him down next or whatever and we're gonna break him down on the on the uh, patreon all this all this film that i'm showing y'all it's up on the patreon it's probably been there uh been there a long time ago you know they they get the early access they get the all 22 they get the long film patreon.com slash watch lombardi but it's gonna be interesting to see the order in which these guys go in i don't think there's a clear consensus number one dude it just depends on what you like uh but with that being said i don't think i gotta hold y'all too long man Go in the comment section, tell me what, what you think about Evan Neal. We'll have a you know conversation about him. Uh, I think that's all I got for y'all, man. Yeah, y'all hold down for the Doskin, Wilson, and Peace, Whiskey. Till next time. Holla.